Oh, hey, everybody. Welcome in. My name is Josh. This is the Gaming Joy channel. And we are back on Middleburg. And we're washing off our little John Deere and getting ready for a little bit more. What are we doing? Uh, we've got the Devourer River <laughs> back on the front. We got a little trailer on the back. This is kind of like my new little setup, and I'm going to show you what I'm doing here. But first, we got to do one quick thing. Uh, let's get out of this thing for a second. And so we have our wood chipper here. And I think because we're using the devourer thing, we don't really need this wood chipper anymore. So let's get rid of the wood chipper. And let's just give ourselves a way to make a little bit more money in a different way. So I'm going to go ahead and sell this wood chipper. There we go. 18,000 back. No big deal. We're going to go into productions. We're going to go over here. And it's not enabled right now, but we'll do it in a minute. So we're going to add another production in here. We'll do that in a few minutes. But for right now, what we're going to do is actually come in here to construction. Go into selling points. We're going to put this little table saw thing. This is the mobile wood cell point. We've used this a couple of times before. We're going to put it right here in the back of this trailer. <laughs> it's This will make sense. Just... And then we're going to get in our truck. And now we have a mobile, a truly mobile wood cell point. And if we open, if we do the spout thing, see the spout's turning around. And because this trailer can accept inputs, now we're pointing at the trailer. And the reason we're doing that is because we're going to cut down a lot of these trees. We're going to create a big field up here. I'll show you the whole field, but for now, I'll show you how this little, this little kit works. Turn on the thinger, the devourer. Put it down, come to a tree, and devour the tree. And then it shoots into the trailer, and it sells right away. <laughs> and we just did that tree. It devours, it sends everything into the cell point, and we just made $5,000. But we don't have to like carry it around. We don't have to carry on the wood. And I can just go like this. I can just go to all of these deciduous trees that we can't get with a tree harvester. And I can just get rid of them. Oh, and then we have a little bit of a line here. Now, as you can see this line, we've kind of like cleared out a, I don't know what you want to call this. We've cleared out an area for us to build our new field. And we've started clearing out the trees inside here. Obviously there's still some more to go. It's not the best time for selling wood chips. That's usually around January, so maybe we'll come back and do more of this kind of wood chipping this winter, right? For now, we have that line. Now, what is that line? What does that line mean? Why is that line there? Now, the reason that line is here... Oh, finish selling your thing. All right, let's get out. Actually, let's turn this off. Let's get out. Let's go into flight mode, just because it's much easier to show you this in the air. So where are we? So here are our fields. These are our, our regular fields. We've harvest, harvested the one right there a little while ago. Um, I don't know why the clip plane does that. I think it's because this is an older map and hasn't been updated recently, but that's fine. So we have this line, and this line goes all the way over here. It goes up and around and we may need to move a little bit faster to show this thing let's move a little faster it goes up and around kind of works with the terrain because around our other fields these are all of our fields and then it goes up <laughs> it goes up the hill it keeps going up the hill We've got a big hill in the middle here and and then it keeps going and going around and around. And you can see this kind of rolling hill that we got going here. This is actually the first time I've looked at it from the air. Um, this is gonna be fun. And then comes along here and goes down this hill. Now, and I'll just drop out of flight mode from here. You can see a few of these trees I've marked with an X. <laughs> Those are the ones that are not on my property. 
but everything downhill of it I own. And so this line is actually the line for the poplar field. I'm going to expand the poplar field up the hill also. And then this track I drove down here, which connects back to where we started, which is our paper mill. <laughs> and so that connects there. And basically everything to the left, all of these trees, we're going to harvest them all. It's going to take a while, but, you know, something fun to do. And to make that job a little bit easier, we got ourselves a John Deere harvester. Now this is a your typical John Deere harvester, uh, wood harvester. I have actually I can't. I think I'm still in flight mode, so I can't get in. Let's turn that off. 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 There we go. And we have our our harvester. This is our tree harvester. Mm, that sounds beefy. Nice. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have our we have our tree harvester here. We're gonna start harvesting this hillside of trees. We're gonna kind of do it as we progress. We'll fill the lumber mill with the trees here. Let's un unlock. This actually looks like it's just a reskinned version of the um, the blue tree harvester that's okay I don't mind but we'll do some tree harvesting a little bit later we're not gonna do it right now but we're gonna do it a little bit later because this is just gonna take a long time and we're gonna keep going but in the meantime so that's what we got we, we upgraded these and we got this ready so that's where we're gonna build we're gonna build that giant field and we're probably gonna plant wheat in that field we have a new um, log trailer we'll use this with that truck to pick up the logs we might do that later on. But for now, the one other upgrade that we got, we're just going to tab over. Ready? All right. So we're back over here at the farm. And so we talked about last time. We talked about this. And we, so we said, well, we might get a new harvester if they can give us a Black Edition. And you know what? It's Black Friday. And we ended up getting a Black Friday deal. And we got a two-for-one deal on harvesters. So we didn't actually get a two-for-one. <laughs> I just going to pretend we did. Anyways. Uh, we ended up getting uh, an upgrade. So we got Harvester 1 and 2. And this is the John Deere C690 or whatever, something like that. Um, is it? Let's see. Let's find out. Uh, yeah. S690 Black Edition. It's the 2015 version. And they did make a Black Edition for us with some awesome tracks. And we're all set up. We had we got a ton of money from clearing that, even just that little path of trees. We got a ton of money from doing that. And in using, doing so, we used all of our profits to upgrade to these harvesters. We have two harvesters, two uh, 12 foot, 12 foot, nine meter, um, Olimac Drago headers for the corn. And then if we come around here, we've got a pair of grain headers as well and so all of that is for harvesting and we just picked up a couple harvesting contracts which we're going to do today um and then so what i'm going to do is i'm going to set up these harvesting contracts with these harvesters and let them do their work and maybe we'll go back and cut some trees um just to, just to figure it out and then the other thing we need to do today is we do need to get and sell our whiskey. Now, selling the whiskey is actually going to take a little bit of work just because it's, you know, we have a lot to sell. We're going to have to find a good sell point for it. Actually, let's stop. I'm going to stop and check something real quick. Let's check the grass up here at the top of the hill because I think that's also going to need to be mowed soon. Maybe not right away. <gasps> this is already ready to be mowed. We have to mow this field too. Oh my goodness, people. We have so much to do. All right, well, I'm gonna leave the time at one because it's gonna take a while. Our grass contracts, so chickens are doing good. Cows are doing good. Our animals are fine. Contracts, we took in a bunch of harvesting contracts to get a little bit of extra week. Wheat, and the reason we took all wheat contracts is we're gonna bring that down to our brewery, which we own now. and. We are going to put everything into the brewery 
and we're going to make some beer. It would be fun. Um, but so we have a bunch of contracts to do. 123, 168. That, where is that? Let's look on the map. We're going to let him drive there. But I believe those are up in this area. Yes. So who knows if he can get there? What was 128 is one of them. Let's send it to 128. So we're going to go start to remember how this thing works. Insert. Field 128. Wait. Go. And our little harvester is going to head off across the entire map and hopefully get there in one piece with this header. <laughs> I'm super doubtful that's going to happen, but I'm going to pretend that it's a good idea. And then also to go along with that, we also need someone to do grain carting. So we are going to get which tractor are we going to get? The truck door is missing. Where's the truck door? He must have gotten lost. I really don't know where the truck door is. <laughs> get this guy do grain carting. Cut across through our rock field, and we pick, we also upgraded our our auger wagon. Now our auger wagon we had before was it was okay. The one problem with it is it's a little bit short, and the auger itself didn't extend very far. And the problem with that is that it wasn't getting over the top of uh, our kind of big rig trailer or any of our trailers for that matter. And so it was having a hard time unloading. So this guy, we do this while driving. Also is going to send him to 128. Wait, and we're sending one other guy to 128. And those those three kind of characters are all going to do their work. We're over here at the mill, and then this tractor, this truck, which we also got, is not very expensive. I haven't actually driven anywhere with this thing yet, so I don't know how good it is. We're going to find out, but it looks pretty awesome. And in all honesty, it goes really well with the trailer. And so this is going to be our grain trailer, so we're going to have the auger wagon getting grain from the harvester. And this guy is going to be parked on the side of the field, and again... We're going to send him to 128. Go. We're going to get out. Have fun. Hopefully, they can all figure out what's going on. This is a dirty truck. Now, this truck gets really dirty really quickly, and I don't understand why. I think there's something in the XML that's wrong where it just gets dirty, like, super, super quickly. I just don't get it. I mean, the trailer's a little bit dirty, but nowhere near as dirty as the truck. Anyways, trailer's clean. Oops, not the thing I wanted to do. Let's make sure this trailer is a regular trailer. Customize, back it is. Uh, let's start off by selling some of our paper goods, which we have here for a while. Paper mill's been running overtime overnight. We did upgrade it with the spawn pallets stacked mod, which will spawn pallets, pallets stacked up. So we're going to get 12 pallets per spawn point, which makes this part of the process a lot easier. And then we're just selling right here at this sell everything place because it's the closest. And we're going to go from there. So let's go in here, sell one load at least. That'll get us a little bit of money to play with. As you can see up in the top right hand corner, that money is cruising up. Paper is a hot topic. Um, I don't know when the hot, let's see when the top sell time for paper is. March. So we're past these, the high. 
being that it's July now. But no matter, it still sells good and it's going to kind of keep us running, honestly. Um, but paper isn't the only thing we're going to be selling. We're going to be selling whiskey today, too. So after this paper sells, we're going to go sell some whiskey. Oh, that wasn't far enough over the trigger, I guess. Oh, well. And it's raining. Goodness gracious. That's going to make harvesting a little bit tough. Let's look at the, the forecast. Because we can't harvest in the rain. August. Uh-oh. It's going to be raining all the way until 11. All right, well, let's speed up a little bit of time. Get to 11 because we can't... That harvester's not going to have anything to do until 11 a.m. In the meantime, let's go sell some whiskey. So I'm going to cruise over to our farm and sell that whiskey. Let's just... Uh, boop. Over to the farm. Yeah, see, we're, we're over at our farm now, and th the weird thing about this this still here, and the downside of this still, is because of where it's placed. It's kind of down here in this, like, little alleyway corridor thing, and it's kind of positioned in a way that's going to be really hard to get a trailer into, honestly. I don't, there's too many trees around. I'm going to have to do some weird backing up. Let's see if I can actually do it once. If I can do it at once, then I can do it a bunch of times, and we'll kind of, I don't know, maybe we'll sell at all the different sell points, or we'll just show you the selling part and not all the trucking parts, because it'll be annoying to watch. You know, I'm auto driving this guy right now. Let's back it up. This is this is a, tr a trip. That tree, little teeny tiny tree there is kind of in the way. I think it's going to meet my chainsaw in a minute. And with the spawn pallets stacked mod, there are quite a few pallets of whiskey stacked up in this spawn point. There we go. That's pretty good. Stack them up. Question is how many will fit on this trailer? We're gonna see in a minute. Right now, let's get rid of that tree. This tree, sorry, Mr. Tree, you're pretty and all, but you're in the way. <laughs> Simple as that. All right, let's pack, stack them in. Whoa. If this goes too high, we're gonna sell quite a bit of corn whiskey all at once. Oh, it's going too high. <laughs> this is going to be one heck of a sale. What do you think, folks? While these are spawning in, let's check our time-saving stock check. Best way to tell when and where to sell stuff. Corn whiskey, high value right now, is almost $2 million. And... The high price is the Klein House sell point. Now, I know for a fact that the Klein House sell point is not easy to get in and out of with a big rig. But we're going to try at least once. Other places we can sell the corn whiskey. I think there's a few. Uh, Where is it? Raz's ribeyes is pretty high. The bar is pretty high. This one's easy to get in and out of. The Klein House is pretty good. The mall is crud but klein the bar and ribeyes are all good selling places so let's go to klein house first and see if we can get this big 53 foot drop deck trailer in and out of that parking lot so far we have 65,000 liters of whiskey <laughs> i have no idea how much is this is going to weigh I don't even know if this truck can handle it. <laughs> I really don't. Yeah, loading area is full. I, I would expect that. That looks pretty full to me. All right. We are not going to let... Uh-oh. I'm already seeing problems.
<laughs> it's like not. It's pulling it. But there's so much weight on the back axle that it can't actually turn. Maybe it'll do better on the flat ground. See that? I'm like turning the wheels and it's catching sometimes. We may have to restrict how much we carry <laughs> and not do a full load like this. Or maybe get the big rig. Look how much the wheel, the back wheels are sinking. <laughs> This might take a while. <laughs> Anyways, I'm not gonna bore you with chitter chatter while we get there. Let's let's do our typical zoom zoom over to the cell point and if I can make it. And um I'll bring you back when we sell all this whiskey. Oh my gosh. No breaks. I think I can make it. I think I can. All right. We'll be back. <laughs> be right back. First load for just over just under <laughs> a half a million dollars. We're back with our second load. This time we took a half load essentially, only one layer deep because this truck was struggling to steer with the full load on the back. It just there was no grip on the front tires. I mean, it's expected. It's a lot of weight. Uh, who knows how much weight was there? But even this is a huge load. So we're gonna jump in here and see how much we get. So. If we're starting out basically at a million dollars, let's see how much like a half load will be. And then I'll finish loading all of the stuff from the still. We got another who knows how many half or full loads in. We'll kind of time lapse them getting dropped off and go from there. And here's our money climbing up like lightning. So we'll kind of inch forward here selling the whiskey as we go we know we started with just about a million we'll see where we go i think it's gonna be about it's gonna be 250,000. let's see if i can get it all in one sale oh almost all in one sale yep so uh, just over two hundred fifty thousand dollars from one load and we've got quite a few more loads to get it's a lot of trucking back and forth but we'll get there in the meantime our harvester did actually make it most of the way over to the new field i did tab over there while i was bringing this over and the harvester got caught on the sign i think um but other than that we kind of got it through and made it past and we got it. Now, one of the my favorite parts, and I wanted to mention this because I mentioned this already, but I wasn't recording my voice. The microphone was off. One of my favorite parts of this map is the fact that things flood like this. I love this. That like this, even this little section of road 
floods, the fields flood, you get these road flooded signs popping up all over town. The river is super full. We get over here and I think this field to the left is completely flooded. Yeah. It's not just a water plane issue. This field to the left is completely flooded. And, you know, this is totally, like, appropriate for the area. Like, the East Coast, when it gets really heavy rainfalls, you get flooding. Um, it's just kind of how it is. Here's the other spot up here where you notice the flooding. It's one of my favorite parts of this map. Here we go. You look like the the lawn or the, the river bank. This is the river. The river is super full right now because of all the rain. Like, that seems so realistic. It just, it's not just raining for the sake of it. It's actually doing something to the gameplay. I think that's... Well, it's doing something to the look of the map. The weird thing is, is even when it's flooded, you can still, like, harvest the fields and it doesn't care. <laughs> uh, or you can still mow, like, a flooded field and it won't care. <laughs> it's silly. But anyways, I'm going to go back up to the farm. I'm going to get another uh, couple loads. I'm going to finish delivering the whiskey. And we'll jump in right as we're making the last sale. And you'll see how much money we're making just from the whiskey alone. Um, we should be making about $2 million. So we're going to do that. And then I will jump back in and let you know and kind of give you a total. And then from there, hopefully by then, it will stop raining. And we can get over and finish up or get going on one of our contracts and see of our how our new little equipment works our new harvest or something like that. see how that stuff works so i'm gonna get another load and i'll catch you guys in a minute back in right now and I think we got our last load out of our own still. It's the last load and there's actually one pallet there of the regular whiskey and the rest of them are corn whiskey. Um, and then we're actually heading over right now to our brewery production that we bought last time and in the hopes of picking up whatever that brewery production has produced um, since last time which I think is about, I don't know, 20, 30 pallets. Um, get most of them on here. And then we're going to go over to the cell point one last time. Luckily, with the time sped up to about five right now, um, we got only about another hour until the rain stops. And then once the rain stops, we're going to get into some harvesting. But for the meantime, let's go sell the rest of this whiskey. As you can see, we're already at $2.2 million. We started out about 400 grand or five, 500 grand before the first load. So we have made that, that $2 million that was um, projected from the time saving stock check to make. We've definitely made it all and we definitely have places to spend all that money. So it is going very, very well. I think this is my turn. Look up the road. That's not my turn. I want the next street. I'm still learning this town. It is a beautiful town, but I'm still learning. Oh, look, there's the bakery. <laughs> Didn't even know there was a bakery. Is it this? Is it this road? You can tell by looking up the street. Yep, there's our brewery right there. All right, let's head up this road. We can make this corner and actually get some traction. <laughs> I 
head up to our brewery, pick up the pallets, and then head back over to the Klein sell point. I mean, they wanted to buy all our whiskey, and so far we've sold them, you know, about <laughs> 200,000 liters of whiskey. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, apparently they, they're having a party tonight. <laughs> Let's go through. We actually haven't driven through the production point this way yet. So let's see how it looks. Oh, I see. There's two little avenues. One for the production. One for the not production. As you can see, one of the triggers is positioned right. One of them isn't. We'll have to add that to our list of things to fix. And this should be close enough to start loading pallets. And all of those pallets shifted in a weird way as soon as I started loading. This is so weird. Let's reload it. Yeah, it's not. Reload it. Load it neatly. Come on. It's on the side. It's not going to get loaded because it's on the side. Let's go over here and do this. There we go. <laughs> That's a lot of whiskey. Almost. One more. Come on. Am I not close enough? I don't think I'm close enough to be in the trigger. There it goes. All right. We are full again. Another 76 pallets <laughs> of whiskey. And these custom pallets that that, um, that Nitro Dad made for the whiskey are pretty cool. The whiskey casks, barrels, and whatnot. I think that's pretty cool. Um, it's different. I know that there was another map that did something similar. I believe that was Castle Mo. Uh, Castle Null. And they did it with two barrels per pallet, so the barrels weren't as wide. No big deal, different way of doing it, but I love how it's whiskey barrels. I think that's super cool. And this is not the way to go, or is the way to go? I don't even know anymore. I'm just driving around. I'll get there. Don't you worry. Well, and I think this field right here, 28, is going to be one of our contracts once it stops raining. Oh, nice. With a nice big power pole in the middle of the field. That's handy. Not really. Oh, I just noticed that the, um, the grain truck at Kenworth is sitting over there at the... Uh, Waiting with auto drive still on. Probably charging me because it hasn't made it to its destination yet. You can see right here as I make these corners why I love the dual axles on the back. Because it sometimes will tip a little bit, but then it won't fall because there's extra width of those axles, which is just super handy. And I did figure out that if I'm selling, like by driving through the sell point, not to unstrap. Just leave it strapped. They'll all sell. Because if I unstrap, things get all kind of crazy. Sorry, Klein. So I was driving your flowers for a second there. Should be up to about three million dollars when we're when everything's said and done. There we go. Two point almost two point eight million dollars. Um, which is pretty fun. I mean, we're in normal economy, so I wasn't expecting that it would be too hard to make this kind of money, as you've been seeing from the previous episodes. Based on the things that we're doing, we're kind of making money hand over fist. Um, which is fine. I'm, I'm totally fine with it. <laughs> you 
can head back over to our brewery, pick up those last few pallets, sell those off, and probably make it into a cool three million. While I do that, we're gonna um, jump over and hit the pause button just for a sec. You don't need to see me driving around town anymore. And we'll catch you back over at the field once it stops raining, and it should be raining. It should stop raining any minute now. Um, and then we can get back to the harvest. No, that's where I want to do. So I'll catch you guys in just a minute. Here we are. I think <clears throat> it finally stopped raining. We're going to head into this field and we've got course play set up. I don't know what that guy's doing. He's supposed to be waiting, but whatever. We're going to go ahead and start harvesting this field. And trying to get like the whole course play unload and dump thing to work the way it's supposed to. So this guy is just going to harvest the field. And that worker in that car cart is supposed to be the carter, the person carting. So he's going to go around and collect or empty out this harvester when it's full. And then when he's full, he's going to empty into that trailer there. Now, I don't know if this field is actually big enough to warrant that. Um, I don't know. I'm still trying to get it to, you to work, but as you can see, we have the auto drive down there on the right. Of course, play just to its right. It's going to take 17 minutes to do this. We're not going to make you sit through the whole thing. But we do have a second version of this kind of set up um, on another one of our contracts that we took up. And of course, we're doing these contracts just for the sake of trying to save some money on that on new properties. Now, we have a ridiculous amount of money. Um, between last time and this time, we actually made about $3 million, which um, I've changed the difficulty settings down to hard, um, or up to hard, I don't know which way you want to call it. Um, but basically, because we're making so much money with all the wood chips, it just seems silly, right? So, $6 million is ridiculous. We've already bought a ton of equipment and a ton of land. we got lots more to buy, but we'll go and buy some stuff in a minute. But let's get this guy harvest. He's doing pretty good. And then we're going to jump over to the other guy harvesting, which is over here. Zoom out kind of navigate. We're going to jump into this guy who is also doing the same thing. Now we set this one up so that that truck over there with the trailer is waiting for the call, the call. And with course play, when you set it up to set it up to do the automatic unload, what happens is as soon as this thing kind of turns on its flashers and says, Hey, I need to be picked up. He'll plot a course come around to wherever this guy is, and he keeps going, um, to do the offload. So we're usually by the time it's ready to offload, the call is happening. Now again, these fields are not super big, so I don't know if it's actually going to ever make it to a point where it has to call the hoppers and these new harvesters we got. Um, they're extended, like as, as much as they'll, they'll be extended, I think they take like 34,000 liters. They're not like a ridiculous amount, but they still are pretty substantial. Um, so I don't even know if we're going to get to the point where we make the call. <laughs> but for now, I'm just going to sit here in the harvester, and let him go, and we'll see what happens. Um, but we're going to spend the money that we've been planning on spending. So part of what we wanted to do here is we wanted to upgrade. We wanted to extend our lands a little bit. We want to extend uh, the hillside. So let's get into our menu for farmland. Zoom out. What do we own? We own a lot. What we do want to own is we kind of want to own everything up here. You could probably own all of it, but let's start with this plot of land here. We're saving 20% on that. Great. Half million dollars. Done. This one is another farm. Now I'm not sure if I want to do this, but I figure why not? Um, this farm isn't really the farm that's most interesting to me. In all honesty, I like um, this, the farm up here with all the grapes more, um, but this one's close and it's kind of bordering our own land. The only way we'll buy the grapes, let's say if we hit $10 million, <laughs> we'll buy grapes. I don't think we're gonna hit $10 million, but if we do, we'll buy this farm and do the grapes and do the wine. But for now, we're just gonna buy this one. This one's gonna be 1.5 million dollars. 
Um, this one comes with olives, so we'd have to get into olives and do the olives. Um, which is, you know, something different, something to do. We're going to buy that one. And then across the street from this farm, there are these three kind of hillside pastures, all of which contain animals, or I think they have animals. So they're not very expensive. We're going to go ahead and buy those. Um, we don't really need any more equipment anytime soon. So we're just going to buy lots of land for now. <laughs> um, this is the other side of our mega meadow. So we could potentially go down the hill with our mega meadow uh, if we wanted to. I'm not sure if I want to. Um, I will get these two right here. This is almost a million dollars alone for these two um, because we do want to extend our poplar field kind of up the hill. Um, our big new land is going to be basically new fields going to be 177, 175, and 171. It's going to be like this block here. Um, but, you know, we're here. We have the money. Why not? Bye. There's a few spots here that are not like viable. That's kind of weird. Okay, that's that's it for land. We own pretty much half the map right now. And we have $1.6 million left. Um, we may need to buy productions or buy equipment. I know that if we're gonna do olives, we have a big harvester bot to buy and all kinds of stuff to buy for that that little thing. Um, so we'll go there and we're blocked by an object. They do pretty good on the circle, honestly but they don't do great. I think it's set to overlap a little bit, which is why he's like getting caught. And also the, the land, the circle that we're going around could be a bit better on this. Um, could have a little bit more of a gap, but I think the overlap is kicking our butt right here. That's okay. So see, we're at 36%. We're almost done with this field. This guy's never going to get to unload. So I don't know if, like, with these new harvesters, we'll actually get to play with the course play unload stuff. Um, it might be nice at some point, but where's our next path? I bet it's right here. Yeah, it's right here. Let's go here. Get him back on course. He's going to finish up the field, and then... If we take this guy's waiting, so hopefully the harvester just comes over here and unloads. That's what I'm hoping. And we have to pick up this straw and do something with straw. We got so much to do. But while we're waiting, let's double check on our other team of equipment, see what they're doing. It looks like this guy is stuck. Great. Thanks. <laughs> This is like the only place where course play just doesn't work is when there are fences really close to fields. Now, if I own this land, I would remove the fences. In all honesty, if you're looking for a map that's good with course play, don't pick one that has fences uh, or hedges um, because it just wreaks havoc with course play and all the stuff. It just doesn't, it doesn't work very well. Well, we got him back on track. Um, we have, I think those are, that sale that's happening there is the, the spawn point for the paper mill. I've set it up right now so that it just sells off the paper as soon as we, as soon as it spawns, um, just to kind of keep that spawn point clear so we can move on. Uh, I'm going to turn the nitro boost on these, um, harvesters. So we can get going and get on with our lives. But again, this is harvester number one. I love the numbers on it. I love the tracks. I think this is a beautiful, beautiful harvester. You're welcome, Josh. I did a good job. <laughs> Let that guy finish harvesting. And we can go over and we're gonna jump out. Let's go over and see what we spot. Because I don't want to see it. So we just bought. Let's go right here. We're gonna jump over. So this is the new farm we bought. And this new farm has some some cool places. 
some cool stuff. I believe this is pigs. Large pig barn with no spaces. <laughs> uh, so we got pigs and slurry. So we can do pigs now, which is cool. We don't have pigs. We only have cows and chickens. We have this, which is... I don't even know what this is. This kind of looks like... Oh, this looks like some kind of olive oil production thing. Let's go over here and look. Oh, this is an oil mill. It makes sunflower, canola, and olive oil. That's sweet. I didn't know I was getting an oil mill with this thing. That's awesome. So we get an oil mill. We get some more chickens. This will be the red farm. The other one's the gray farm. We have a barn. A nice, big, huge barn. Perfect. Uh, we got a farmhouse. We got some greenhouses. We'll have to deal with those. And I think we got this big cow on the side. But Let's check out how many cows this farm holds. Uh, let's look here. It looks like it holds 250. Wow, that's a lot. Um, and it's got what looks like a milk trigger. Yep, that's a little milk tanker thing in the window. So we're going to have some more dairy cows up here at this farm. That's pretty cool. And it looks like they have a big pasture to go out and it's huge, um, which is also means more mowing to do. <laughs> uh, we might have to get a separate mower down on this side of the, this down the hill, get one up at the top of the hill too. We'll see. Looks like this farm already has a manure heap set up. The last one didn't, which is cool. Four million liters. That's ridiculous. Um, and we have another hayloft. Um, actually, is this a hayloft or is this one of our production facilities? I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Maybe it's just a hayloft. Um, I might have the guys come in and put our forage depot in instead of the hayloft or just kind of upgrade this building down there to be able to handle the forage depot stuff. We'll see. We got a house. I don't think we're going to use it because we already have one up to the top of the hill. That's okay. We can delete it. And then we own like all of this land. If we look back at our farmland, we have, where is this? If we look back at our farmland, we kind of bought everything, <laughs> everything up here. So all these trees, everything around here, it's all ours. Um, and we're eventually gonna come down here for this one too. Um, I don't know if we'll get up here on the hill because who needs them, but we have these farms here. And so this one right here is, I believe this is sheep. Let's double check. Again, more grass to go, more grass to mow, because the grazing thing isn't on here. So we'll just mow them. 150 sheep. That's pretty cool. We're gonna have to give water. We don't actually have a water tanker. We're gonna have to get a water tanker. But they got a big, huge area to graze in, um, which we'll of course have to mow. Um, I think this is the end of the cow pasture, which is cool. Lots of animals, so it would be fun. This here is another farm barn thing, which is also ours now. Let's see. This is a large horse barn. Now, I don't necessarily want horses. <laughs> um, and the horse barn is kind of set up the same as a sheep barn. So I don't know if we're going to keep this. And this also looks like a silo of some kind. Like, why would you need an output? silo from a horse barn. I'm not sure I understand that one. These doors do not open for some reason. Let's jump the fence. See what's over here. Uh, looks like we have to dump in food. Yeah, they don't open. Oh well. That's cool. Little farm down here with a farmhouse. A little shed. A little barn here. Another cow pasture. This one does not appear to have a milking pa parlor, so this will be for beef cows. More grass to, to mow. And we're going to have to get all of this set up. Um, it kind of looks like we need a, like another setup down here so we're not moving vehicles back and forth. Um, but down here, it looks like we really just need, I don't know, mowing equipment? You know, a swather and stuff? Maybe just a loading wagon. We won't bail down here. We'll just use the loading wagon. Um, 
and you know a truck with a trailer maybe we'll see i mean i wasn't even planning on buying this until the money rolled in and then i was like whoa we got a lot of money to play with and then we also have the we have this land. All of this land is ours, which apparently has a very big hay field uh, or a prairie grass field. It's a visual height hay, <laughs> so it's a lot there. Um, looks like we got some, what, potatoes here? Cool. We got two fields side by side of potatoes. That's cool because they're right next to each other, so they're not too far to go. We have this place to mow, which is huge. And then we have the olives. And here are the olive trees. And we don't, I don't even know. Like, these are olives. I don't see olives on them. I'm not getting any info. So how do I know if these are ready or not? Let's look. So it doesn't even show up as an olive field. But what does that mean? I really don't know. Like... Am I going to have to replant all of these to make them an actual field? I mean, it looks like an olive field. Maybe I just have to mow it once or, or like till the ground or whatever, mulch it the first time. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let's... All right, let's just... We have a ton of money. Let's buy some stuff. We're going to buy the kit for down here. All right? This is the kit for down here. We're going to leave it down here. We're not going to go back and forth. So what do we say we needed? <laughs> First of all, we need a wind rower. Um, we'll do the ones down here green <laughs> just for fun, right? Uh, so we're going to, what's this? Buy that. Come in here and buy a I'm trying to get through this quick. Buy nope. Big one. That doesn't work at all. Uh main color green. So it'll be green on the end. Buy yes. Let's get uh just to do a forge wagon. Let's get one of our forge wagons. Um, good that this one, this is fun. This one holds like a bazillion liters. Uh, keep it legit for now, I guess. Let's just get a big one. Do we want the big one? Sure, why not? Unreal size of 230, that's good. <laughs> yep, yep, could no cover. Good rim color. We'll go back to the green. Buy. Yes. Let's get a tractor. I don't think I've modified any of the other John Deere's to be black. Let's get an 8RX down here. And then we will, is this the right one? Yes, this is the right one. So we're gonna get an 8RX down here. We don't have one of these, so we're gonna get one. Um, I like the tracks. I don't want that. What is this? Yeah, we're just gonna leave with the tracks. I don't want the row crop ones. No. Kind of like the wider tracks, though. That's kind of cool. Uh, the biggest one they got. Yes, extra lights, no triangle, main color black. And then we'll get the dealership to come over and paint this thing black. Because, you know, that's how we go. <laughs> Alright, how much more money can we spend? Uh, we needed a water tanker of some kind um, to feed the animals. Um... Nothing that I'm seeing that yells out to me. Uh, 20,000 liters should be good. I think we already have one of these, but we've got another one. A 
then we need a truck or a car to pull that. No. Nothing I want to buy. Just get into the farm truck. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> That's good enough for me. Bye. Yes. All right, so we got some stuff down here and we can do some mowing and whatnot. Um, the other thing we need down here is actually a small tractor. So let's get a small tractor. The reason we need a small one, we're gonna go over here and probably get the 5M, another 5M for down here. Um, just because we'll get another 5M for down here. Because I think we need it for, yeah, there, there. I always like those. Those look cool. Uh, we need the small tractor for getting in the rows because we need to be able to cultivate that olive field. So let's get this. <laughs> Having lots of money is fun because you get to buy all kinds of stuff. Um, and then we need some kind of, we need a mulcher. Technically, we're not supposed to get one of these. We're supposed to get like, this is like, this one was like a 2.2 .2 meter mulcher. Technically, we're supposed to get a smaller mulcher than that. But let's stick with a 2.2 one for now. And we'll see how that works. We do have this one, but that's too big. 6.1. That's kind of cool looking. Let's get this one for now. Yeah, why not? We'll try it. Let's lease it just to make sure it's the right thing. So let's first of all go over and check out these olives. I don't know if this is going to work. I have truthfully never used olives on this map. I have used olives before or done olives or whatever you want to call it. There needs to be a hole in that fence. It's going to be annoying to have to drive around this big fence just to get into my own field. But let's see what's going on here. So come in here. This tractor should fit down this row. Then we're gonna stick the mulcher down and then we're gonna mulch in between the rows and look it doesn't even fit well that's stupid all right well we didn't make it very far with our plan because the tractor fits, but the mulcher does not. All right, let's let's look at the the chart though. Let's back this out of here and see if that changed the fields at all. Did that change the field at all? You know what? Now we got everything here. We'll get. I'll get this farm settled and prepped. I'll figure out this olive field, and then next time we'll do some mowing. Right now we have some harvests that are in the middle of happening that are contracts that we have to finish. So that harvester looks like it's full. No, he's not full. So you go back to doing what you're doing. Finish up and then we'll come by after you. Oh, we got a lot more stuff to tab through now. Okay, I'm not gonna tab anymore. All right, so let's come in here and... Where's my field? Here, we're over here. So we tried to follow the harvester. Apparently it didn't work, 
But this guy came and tried to empty out the harvester when he called, so that's a pretty good job, right? So he did what he was supposed to do. So, I mean, that's a minor win. Guess. So he's going to empty out. We're going to get those little corners and bits of the field. And then maybe come back here with the um, special windrower and pick up all the straw. Yeah, we're going to do that. I'm going to finish off these two harvests and we're going to jump back in once they're done and probably when we get going on the second one. And we'll be right back. Take care of this. Be right back. Hey, folks, we're back. We're over at uh, the next field. And uh, actually, nicely enough, this next field is right next to our new farm. Um, or the new property that we own. And while this harvester is finishing up his task and we pick up the straw, um, hopefully he's going to unload. I think he's going to self-unload, yeah, which would be nice. So you go do your job. I'm going to make sure you do it. I don't know. He's just, just sitting there like an idiot. Who knows? He might route himself over here, drop off. But as we pick up the straw, we're going to... We actually... While this harvester was working, we had checked in on the field, checked in on the map, tried to figure out what was going on with this... Um, those grapes? No, sorry, grapes. The olives? Trying to figure out what's going on with the olives and so why we couldn't harvest them. Uh, turns out there was a problem on the map. We fixed it. No big deal. Um, and we also um, traded out that mulcher. Let's, let's go... Over, actually, we're almost done. Let's fill this thing up. This tractor has so much torque, it always drifts the trailer out when it turns. I find that amusing. Alright, so we're full. I don't know what he's going to do. He looks like he's trying to do something, but I'm not sure what. Let's head down the road and drop the straw off at our forage depot. Now, we did... Um, go inside and flip the switches and stuff like that and fix the hayloft and, and change it into a forage depot just because that's the way we want to play it. Um, it's the same building, same model. You know, no big deal. So we're going to drop this off. And actually, we should probably drop this off in the barn. And we'll drop it in the forage depot. Now... The one thing about this farm that I'm not a super fan of are the gates. <laughs> There's gates everywhere and fences everywhere. And you'll see in a, in just a second that, I mean, I know it looks nice. I'm generally not a fan of gates or fences, um, but it does become a problem. There we go. You unload, I'm gonna go over here. It does become a problem over here at the new olive grove. Now, I don't I've never I don't really do olives very often, but to me that isn't very much space to be able to turn around. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I got the we got this thing going. I did a couple rows just to make sure it was working. But essentially, we're going to go in here, we're going to go like this this put the front down start mulching back goes down and we're mulching our rows no big deal because we're you know in between the rows um you got a nice big area to turn around on the other side up here at the end problem is, is when we get around to the other end that end that white fence is totally in the way and then also because these fields are our fields yet there's a big fence blocking us from getting to our own fields so i don't know if i'm just gonna take out all of the fence or just the fence on the like the road side but you'll see in just a minute when i turn around why that's gonna be a problem 
This is very slow, tedious work <laughs> doing the hollows like this. So we can come here. Oops. This just so what we're doing is we got a mulcher on the front, and we have a non-powered mulcher, so it doesn't take up too much energy from the tractor. It makes it just run a little bit smoother. Um, which is nice. And then we have a slightly bigger cultivator on the back, which is actually getting more of the row. So we're basically completing the row in one pass, doing both our mulching and our cultivating. And this is something you have to do every season uh, with the olives. It's just kind of how olives work. But here we go. We get to the end of the row. and <laughs> This is where it becomes a problem. Come up to the end of the row, and we're like, um, I need to turn around. And I'm lifted up, and then. <laughs> like, you know, maybe it's because I'm using a big track, like a bigger tractor than the normal vineyard tractor. Maybe it's. But, I mean, even the harvester is going to have a hard time turning around in that, that small space once we buy the super expensive olive harvester. Right? It's going to have a hard time. So, I think we should pause here, turn him off, go into construction mode, and delete this fence. Or not. Oh my gosh, it's not deletable. Well then, we may have to get somebody out here to fix that. Because if you look, this fence goes all the way up to here. And it's all not removable. Because that turnaround there is going to be a pain in the butt. And that's going to frustrate me. <laughs> uh, oh well. Anyways, back to the harvest or harvesting things that are happening. This guy is up here at this other field. This feels pretty big. Um, and the harvester seems to be doing a weird dance, probably because I'm in the way. Yeah, I think it's because I'm in the way. Yeah, I don't know what he's doing. So let's just cancel him for just a second come over here empty out looks like we don't need the card or any as it is so maybe we don't even need the auger wagon we can just kind of for doing contracts because this is one of the bigger fields we're doing a contract on and he would have had been able to do his job once like the auger wagon makes sense for super huge fields, so maybe we'll just kind of hold it up later. But for now, I think we're just going to use our trucks, park our trucks next to the field, and let the harvesters unload themselves. That's probably the simplest. Anyways, we don't need to do it all. We just need to do enough to make sure we get through the field. And let's set him back off on his course so he can finish off this field. And the we'll go unload the other harvester, too. This guy is number one, so if we hit tab, we're going to go to number two. I named them backwards. <laughs> okay. Let's clean up this field because we're nice. We don't actually need to do this. The harvesting contracts do not require it, but it's always a nice thing to do, I think. The only reason they're messy is because we didn't do the harvesting ourselves. We let the AI do it. <laughs> Let's get down to the other end, and then we'll empty this up. And that's going to be kind of it for today. I think we've gone pretty long. We've gotten so much stuff done. We got so many new things added. We got this whole new farm we got to figure out. Um, and we got to get some animals. <laughs> and... and 
mow a bunch of new property fields. I think we may leave it in the same day so we can do all that next time because that's always kind of fun to do as we kind of explore our new property. And then finish off these contracts and go from there. But that's a lot of busy work. You don't need to see the busy work. The fun stuff we've already done. We've got a new property. We've expanded. We've checked out all of our new areas. And next time, we'll kind of grow into those areas a little bit. See. Whoa. Let's uh, slow down a little bit there, buddy. We'll finish off. But I want to say thank you for everyone for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share. Let me know how you like uh, how you like things are going. I want to know what I should do with this farm. Should I just fill out all the animals? Should I fill out all those pens, get them all going, make sure that I'm um, doing the extra work to to uh, feed everything, you know, and get we get some extra products. I definitely want to get into the olives. We'll have to deal with the rest of that olive grove later, and we'll go from there. But thank you everyone for watching. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.